released in 1987 from Data East, the real Ghostbusters arcade game was a cash-in on the cartoon show of the same name. In the game you take control of up to three different Ghostbusters, as long as you have two friends to play with you. As you can see the game is a shoot 'em up of sorts but rather than just scrolling forward, you can explore the levels to a certain degree. There are 10 levels in total with none really representing anything in the Ghostbusters world. In fact, the characters don't even look like Ghostbusters. Well, there is a reason for this. You see, this game is actually just a reskin of a pretty crappy Japanese Data East game known as Meikyu Hunter G. As you can see, the Japanese version is the same game, but with less cartoonish sprites. For this American arcade game, all Data East did was change a few sprites, the layout of the levels and throw in a couple of Ghostbusters screens. Besides that, it's the same awful game as the Japanese version. Well, there are a few improvements, such as more energy for the main weapon, that being the Proton Pack in the US game, and slightly fairer gameplay. So the first part we're going to take a look at is the Amiga version by Activision. Straight away we can hear the much improved soundtrack over the arcade original. The funky Ghostbusters mix is really good, but it does get a little repetitive after a while. Sadly the game isn't as good as the music. It's rather jerky in movement, but that isn't too much of an issue. What is an issue is the collision detection. Your player has a hitbox the size of a sumo wrestler's arse. It's massive. Things can fly right past you yet, you'll still be hit by them. So being a game with only 5 lives and no continues really doesn't give players much chance of completing the game. Still I do like that we have music and sound effects at the same time. The Atari ST port is pretty much the same as the Amiga port, so that means it also has all the same flaws. One flaw that I didn't point out during the Amiga section, but is present, is how close to the edge of the screen you have to be before it scrolls. So many home computer games have this problem. What was wrong with all of those developers?
Okay, moving on to the 8-bit versions, now starting with the ZX Spectrum, and it's horrible. Just look at how it scrolls. This makes the Amiga and ST ports look smooth as butter. The problem continues too with the sprites, that are oversized, giving very little space to move around at times. Sluggish controls, and yep, you guessed it, really poor collision detection. I also wonder why they bothered to add colour to this port. It makes it look worse. Which would you prefer? Monochrome graphics, or graphics with a solid square block of colour slapped onto them? I know which I'd opt for. Good music for a specky though. Now here is what the ZX Spectrum version should have looked like, but in monochrome. The Amstrad CPC version is very much like the ZX Spectrum port, although it does seem to contain more sprites on screen compared to the Speccy. This is kind of odd considering the CPC is normally the slowest out of the 8-bit home computers. So how does this CPC version play? Well, pretty much the same as the Spectrum version, but with a little more thought put into the collision detection, if the truth be told. And let's finish off with the Commodore 64 port. As with tradition, the C64 port looks nothing like the CPC and ZX Spectrum versions. Now we have a smaller collection of enemies and a main character. However, the plus side to this means that there's actually room to move around, making for a more playable game. It's not great mind you, but far better than what we saw on the Spectrum and the Amstrad. And let's take a look at all those versions of the real Ghostbusters running side by side. 